This is your ultimate beginner's guide to Modern Warfare 3 Zombies that is literally about to release right around the corner. I'm so excited to see how the community reacts to this mode, as it is so different to what we have ever gotten before and is going to require many different game sessions to acquire and build up good loot. So Call of Duty have released their own blog post that I'm going to break down in this video, and this is going to give a general overview to the mission structure, your equipment, field upgrades, acquisitions, schematics, acts, tiers, rewards, and everything regarding your deployment in the Uzbekistan exclusion zone. So you, the operators, of course, are going to be playing for the CIA as a part of Operation Deadbolt, and your main tasks, aside from surviving hordes of zombies and the machinations of the PMC group, Terminus Outcomes, are threefold. So you will need to explore the open world and search for valuable acquisitions and schematics. The world is full of opportunity to complete contracts to earn essence, collect acquisitions, and clear missions to discover what is really happening in the exclusion zone. Secure and extract, you need to also learn when the situation on the ground becomes advantageous, as well as untenable. Immerse yourself and work with other players to complete the more difficult mission objectives and extract before you are overwhelmed. So Modern Warfare 3 Zombies is going to begin in the main menu itself, which you can see on screen. This is going to be detrimental to this mode. Unlike prior Zombies' modes, where there wasn't really much to do in the menu, you will need to customise every single game before you hop in. So this is going to be very important and will feature the same global panel access, but the menu is slightly different to the other modes. So the main menu across the top features lobby, gear, strike team, customization, and the bypass store, like usual, and it's meant to prepare you for your next mission to survive the undead hordes. The match and progress information along the bottom of the screen allows you to launch into your next match and quickly ascertain how much of the zombie story missions you've completed. So in terms of readying up for the missions itself, so you have three different strike team operator slots, and you are able to recruit any unlocked operator for your strike team. Each recruited operator will have their own on soldier gear. All operators you've unlocked from Modern Warfare 2 and 3 are available and two operators, Ripper and Scorch, are unlocked after you complete specific challenges within Zombies. So these are exclusive to this mode, you can use them in others, but this is how you unlock them. Each strike team operator can be chosen and comes with five different customizable equipment slots. The gear you find during missions is saved here and includes killstreaks, armor, gas masks to survive longer in the ether storm and medical items. In terms of the rucksack, this is again going to be a very important part of Modern Warfare 3 Zombies because this is going to be your bag and it's going to work just like in DMZ. You'll have different backpack types, small, medium, large, and this will actually allow you to carry an extra weapon as well, so there's no need for mule kick in this game. So you can fill your rucksack with essential acquisitions that you find on the battlefield or craft via valuable schematics. Initially, there are up to five open slots on the small rucksack. After your first mission, providing you found either acquisitions or schematics, you can add such items to the rucksack. In terms of your loadout, again, a very important part of Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. Of course, the last two zombies, you've been able to have your own loadout, but it's even more in depth in this mode, you can choose two primaries or a primary and secondary weapon to take along with a lethal tactical and field upgrade. You have a primary and secondary weapons all from Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3 are available. Any that are XP recommended are denoted by the small fire icon and grant you more XP if used. You also have insured slots and these are weapons you have leveled up, added attachments to and to come from the weapon pool of over 100 Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3 weapons. If you fail to exfil with an insured weapon, it only becomes available again after a cooldown period. You have up to three insured slots and two of them are unlocked after completing Zombies missions. You also have Contraband Stashes. These are weapons you found and exfilled with and are permanently lost if left behind during a mission. So of course the main gameplay loop of Modern Warfare 3 Zombies is you will deploy and spawn in on the outskirts of Urzikstan, the war zone map, and basically there's three different zones, each varying in difficulty, with the hardest being Tier 3 in the center. And around 45 minutes into your game, in the center of the map is where there is the Ethereum container that will start expanding the Ether Storm, pushing you to the outskirts of the map up until 60 minutes of your game, where you'll then have to exfil on a helicopter. And you are able to bring loot to exfil with, just like in DMZ, into future games. And you can keep a stash of up to 20 of these weapons, which may or may not have attachments added to them, and is helpful when augmenting your loadout. There are tactical and lethal equipment. A selection of multiplayer tactical and lethal equipment can be equipped at the start of your loadout. Tacticals include sun grenade, smoke grenade, scatter mine, decoy grenade, shock stim, stim, or experimental gas grenade. For the lethals, you also have frag grenades, claymores, throwing knives, Thermites, Proximity Mine, Drill Charge, Sticky Charge, C4, Molotov Cocktail, and the Breacher Drone. Now, you also have Monkey Bombs in the game, but these are not going to be a part of your loadout that you can equip, but it's something you can get physically in your game. In terms of the field upgrades, these function just like in Cold War Zombies, just like in Vanguard Zombies, and they are all returning ones as well, and they look very beautiful in this game. So if you haven't played those games, these are completely different from the equipment in multiplayer. There are six of them, five of which are unlocked as you progress through your military player ranks, and they have removed a couple that were present in 
in Vanguard and Cold War Zombies, such as Ring of Fire, which was a huge favorite, probably because they're going to nerf it, so there will probably be more added post-launch. We have Energy Mine, which is a medium recharge, spawn an explosive, dealing massive damage to enemies who set it off. Frenzied Guard, a slow recharge, repair armor to full and force all enemies in the area to target you for 10 seconds. Enemy kills repair armor during this time. So yeah, they are slightly different to the variants we've had before, but very similar. Healing Aura has a slow recharge and heals all players immediately, and in Last Stand even. We have Frost Blast, which has a medium recharge and damages enemies with initial blasts and slows those that enter the area of the effect. We have Ether Shroud, which has a medium recharge, become invisible to the zombies, and finally we have Tesla Storm, which is a slow recharge. For 10 seconds, Lightning connects to all the players, stunning and damaging normal enemies. In terms of adding to your attacks with acquisitions and schematics, once you return from your first few successful missions and exfil successfully, you are able to place acquisitions into your rucksack for use during subsequent outings. You can also start to craft your own acquisitions at the schematic crafting location in the lobby between drops. And again, this is a very important part of the gameplay. So for acquisitions, these are single use items that can give you an advantage on the battlefield. Acquisitions you find an expo within your rucksack can be added to your acquisition stash within your rucksack menu. For the schematics, these are highly sought after plans that permanently allow you to craft acquisitions that you can add to your rucksack. Schematics have a cooldown period after which they can be brought into the exclusion zone. So this is huge because these will allow you to bring things like a ray gun into a game, juggernaug into a game, but the schematics are actually going to have a cooldown. So you can either choose to build the schematic in your game physically, or you can expo with it to bring it into a future game. But yeah, the cooldowns need to be balanced well. So the following types of acquisitions can be found in Erd or crafted if the schematics are located and all have a rarity value associated with them, denoting how difficult they are to find and the level of improvements they bring to the weapon or item they affect. So ether crystals are actually back in this game, but they work different now because they are just schematics. So they're not like permanent upgrades, just like you could do in Cold War Zombies. I'll go on to. So the Dark Ether element is used in conjunction with crafting schematics to bolster your weaponry. So we have raw and refined Ethereum crystals. These are used to upgrade your pack punch weapons to levels one and two respectively. And you also have uncommon rare epic and uncommon ether tools. These upgrade your current held weapon to a rarer form. The rarer the form, the more impressive damage the weapon inflicts. So here it implies that these ether crystals can only be applied to your weapons. So not your perks and other items like your field upgrades like you could do in Cold War Zombies. Now it's possible this may change post-launch so that there are crystals that you are able to add onto your perks and stuff. We'll have to wait and see. But speaking of the perks, there are nine in this game. Like I said, there's not 10 because there's no need for Mule Kick. I hope they do add some new ones post-launch as well. And they are all the ones, apart from Mule Kick, from Cold War Zombies. No returning ones. However, we do actually have classic PhD Flopper instead of PhD Slider this time. So the Vest, Gloves, Boots and Gear perk system is not available in Zombies. Instead, you receive a permanent boost through a mission unless you fully die to various in-game attributes by finding or crafting a perk cola. So you can get these perks, there's perk machines on the map, but these spawn in in random. So they're going to be difficult to find the map. Urzik stand is of course very large. So there are also wonder fizzers on the map, but the way that you are going to be able to get these perks for the most part, whilst you can just buy them directly from the perk machine, you're not going to want to be exploring the full map, especially because they're random to do so. So they're going to be a very common loot. So you'll find perk hands in buildings when you're just exploring or via loot, you actually get for completing the mission. So it seems like you will get one after you do a mission pretty much every time. So you should just be able to easily get these perks as you are playing. And some of their effects are slightly different to what we've seen before. So Deadshot Daiquiri allows you to have your ADS aiming down sights moves to enemies' critical locations, so it'll snap onto the headshot, and it also removes scope sway, so there is no increased headshot multiplier, unfortunately. We have Death Perception, which will allow you to see obscured enemies, chests, resources, and item drops more easily, as it'll allow you to see them through walls. Apparently, these are useful for things like the strongholds, because you'll be able to see, for example, the ether pods in the nest, but through walls and stuff like that, so you'll be able to see where you shoot them. This is going to come very in handy. Of course, it'll highlight, you know, where the nearest perk is or whatever you need to find on the map. It'll just be make things a lot easier. We have Elemental Pop. Every bullet you fire has a small chance to apply a random ammo mod effect, just like in Cold War. We have Juggernog, of course, which just increases your maximum health. We have PSG Flopper. Yes, that's right. Divine as a prone triggers an explosion. The explosion increases the higher you fall. Immunity from fall damage while diving. Immunity from area of effect damage from weapons you are using. So yes, it's Flopper this time, not Slider. We even saw awesome in the gameplay. You can literally just dolphin dive off a, a building and just completely destroy the hordes. It'll be so much fun. I can't wait to do this. And it'll be so much fun as well when you run out of ammo. And yeah, it will also stop you from fall damage and it will stop you from explosive damage and ray gun splash damage too. We also have quick revive, reduce the health regeneration delay by 50% and reduce the time it takes to revive an ally by 50%. So it won't actually allow you to have self revives. It's only going to allow you to revive quicker. We have speed color, drink 
to reload and replace armor faster. So yeah, it's not just going to allow you to reload faster like usual, but it'll also allow you to replenish armor faster. Awesome. We also have stamina up, which increases your run and sprint speed. Nothing special there. And then tombstone. So day is quite different in this game. So on death, you create a tombstone stash at that location containing your backpack inventory in the next game. So there you have it. So if you die, you are then able to come back with all of your items in the next game without even needing to successfully exfil. Now in terms of the ammo mods. So once again, these are all returning ones, but they've removed some. So the weapons you are currently holding can be further augmented with an ammo modification. For the exact effect each mod brings to battle, why not test them out in the exclusion zone for yourself? So they haven't actually given a description, but of course, if you play Cold War Zombies, you know what these do. So of course, these will be on a cooldown. When you shoot every now and again for brain rot, it'll allow you to get a friendly zombie or a friendly hellhound or something like that. For example, you can get a friendly hellhound to then pet the dog. It's one of the achievements. Cry freeze, just like the name suggests, it'll freeze a few zombies in a region. Deadwire, just like the Wonder Dwarf, it'll electrocute some zombies in a horde. Napalm burst, it'll set some zombies in a horde on fire. Shower blast, it'll explode some zombies. So very self-explanatory there. They might be slightly different in this game, of course. We'll have to wait and see, but apparently you could only apply these ammo modifications via the schematic system and not via the Pack-a-Punch, according to leaks. Now, this isn't confirmed yet. We'll have to wait and see when we play, but the Pack-a-Punch, apparently there's going to be a different Pack-a-Punch tier depending on your tier zone you were in. So, of course, there's three tier zones. So, Pack-a-Punch tier 1 will be in zone 1. Pack-a-Punch tier 2 will be in zone 2. Pack-a-Punch tier 3 will be in zone 3. But I like how it's like in Cold War Zombies, where not only can you upgrade the tier of your Pack-a-Punch weapon, but also the weapon of rarity too. So, there's two different weapon upgrade types, essentially, in this game. But yeah, it seems like you can only find these ammo mods as loot or schematics in the game, but I could be wrong about that. Again, that's according to leaks. Now we have, in terms of the wonder weapons, we have three. So we have the new wonder weapon, which is the Scorcher, which is basically just like the die shock wave from D-Machine. It'll just blast the hordes, and it's also like the paralyzer from Buried in Black Ops 2, where if you shoot the ground, it'll actually shoot you up in the air and it'll allow you to redeploy. Very good if you're in a sticky situation, or if you just want to tra travel even very quickly. And we have the classic ray gun back, of course, and we also have the Wonder Wolf DG2 back, which apparently is very similar to the Vanguard version and is very, very good. So three wonder weapons. You can get them from the mystery box and you can also get them as loot, of course, in the game as well. And apparently the mystery box, the longer you were in the game and the higher tiers you were in, the mystery box loot will get better. Now, in terms of the missions overview, in terms of the acts, tiers and rewards, so begin to acclimate to the horrors of the Urzikstan Exclusion Zone and commence a multi-layered storyline that focuses on a variety of teen missions in three acts. Not all missions are immediately accessible and the mission you wish to complete, which may have one or multiple tasks, is highlighted. Mission completion rewards, including acquisition, cosmetic items, durable items, double XP tokens are also visible prior to exfil. So there is actually not going to be a main easter egg on a launch, however there are going to be three cutscenes you're able to unlock in the game on launch by completing all of these mission acts. So apparently at the end of each of the acts, where there's three of them, you'll get teleported to a brand new section of the map where you can do puzzles and stuff like that. This is a new section, you'll be teleported there, just your squad, and it's been apparently uniquely built up just for this quest. So there's essentially a main quest with these missions, but you have to complete these missions over many different games. It's going to take, you know, five plus hours, eight hours. We don't know exactly how long it'll take to complete all the missions. It's not like a normal Easter egg where you can just do all of them in one game, but yeah, you'll complete each of the missions and apparently you'll get a cutscene after you've finished each of the missions. So there'll be three to unlock on launch. So you complete tasks within a mission and receive unlock mission and rewards. You complete missions within a tier and receive unlocked missions and rewards. You complete all tiers to finish an act and receive unlocked missions and rewards. If you complete all three acts, you receive something redacted, we're not sure what that is, and continue to uncover mysteries plaguing the exclusion zone prior to the storyline continuation at season one. So season one, there's going to be more missions added. I don't know if that's when the Easter egg gets added or it'll be added later as well. But yeah, there'll be three cutscenes you can unlock. So I'm interested to see storyline-wise what actually happens. But yeah, there'll be various different missions you can do. Some of them will actually also allow you to extend your game time because you could start it, for example, half an hour into your game and then the mission lasts about an hour. It will still require you to exfil at the end. And these seem like the one and done things. So it doesn't seem like it'll extend your 60 minute countdown in that sense. But yeah, some of them will allow you to play for a bit longer. And in this mode, you can start a squad with three players. You can play solo if you want. You can choose not to play with a squad. However, there'll still be other squads on your game and other squads can work together as well. And you can also assimilate and revive other players to get up to a max of six players on a squad. Now, in terms of the mission parameters, the essence of zombies, you have freedom and flexibility to explore the exclusion zone throughout Urzikstan and infilling allows you to complete a wide variety of activities as well as specific missions you assign to yourself prior to the session start. Aside from the specific mission tasks you were undertaking, each zombie infill enables you to explore, investigate the low, medium and high threat zones. This can be done with a purpose or you can simply remain in the relatively safety of a low threat zone as you learn how to deal with
with a variety of enemy threats. Weapon leveling is an excellent plan within the outer edge of the map. So this is going to be the more chill area where, you know, if you're sort of learning the mode, you can just stay within. You don't have to progress into the hard difficulty zones. You will need to for some of the missions, of course, and to start to get a challenge, but this will be a good area for leveling up stuff. You can complete contracts in the game. This allows you to earn essence, the in-game currency, mainly gathered after zombie cullings. But yeah, this is just basically points. Of course, renamed in Cold War and Vanguard and acquisitions by completing contracts in the field for Operation Deadbolt. You can upgrade to progress, spend essence at machines across the map and upgrade your weapons and gear. So of course, the pack a bunch, the mystery box, war weapons, etc. They're all back in this mode. Extract acquisitions. Successful exfils allow you to keep acquisitions to get a head start in the next deployment. Within a deployment, your tack map displays a variety of interesting game features and some of the most important ones are detailed below so you can understand how to interact with them. So we have buy stations in this mode, allowing you to purchase a variety of helpful items such as kill streaks, gas masks and other essentials. Gas masks of course will be very necessary to surviving longer in the ether storm when it starts to expand as well as many unwanted items you have collected. Of course you also have the perca cola machines, these allow you to of course have a beverage to increase your power in a variety of ways. You also have the pack punch machines to upgrade how good your weapon is, usually in the ammunition and damage department for a price. Of course it will be something like 5,000 for tier 1, 10,000 for tier 2, 15,000 for tier 3, probably something like that but it might be more expensive. I believe the prices will leave before but I can't remember them off the top of my head. War buys like I said before are back so you can purchase them if needed and get ammo I guess. Although you could just get ammo from the ammo boxes as well. There are mission boxes, these offer you know a random weapon of course for 950 essence and that is it. Nothing gets in, nothing gets out. Now I've made prior videos going over Modern Warfare 3 zombies that I will have linked below that you can watch in the meantime but this has been a general overview from everything. Honestly I was expecting them to detail more in this vlog because we've kind of gotten a lot more information from the leaks. We literally have all the missions and stuff for example but this is a general good overview. Anyways thank you for watching the video make sure to subscribe if you're not here for latest and greatest Call of Duty news and information. So anyways thank you for watching and uh, bye.